many concepts as to how this earth of ours came into being. But for untold centuries, it has spun its way through space and time. Some of the Earth's secrets, perhaps man will never know. But since the beginning of his existence on the Earth, he has struggled to understand it and to possess it. For upon the Earth, the existence of life entirely depends. From the Earth comes shelter, food, fuel, wealth, beauty, and life itself. So land, the substance composing the earth becomes the common denominator for the existence of man. But land itself is neither food, nor clothing, nor shelter. Rather, it is the use of the land that provides these needs. On his land, man grows his crops, searches for raw materials, builds his homes and his cities, and provides the standard of living that his family may enjoy. Thus, the value of a piece of land is measured not by its size alone, but by its usefulness, its usefulness to the owner. And ownership of a piece of land is more than ownership of its surface. It is also the rights to the subsurface down to the center of the earth, as well as the space above. So it is in the title to land, the legal right to its use, that man finds his own place under the sun. Since the beginning of civilization, the importance of land ownership has always been recognized. The Romans assembled great legions to venture forth into the world and claim all the land. The serfs of Europe worked the land for their lords, and even though their toil was great, they shared in only a small portion of what the land produced, and in its ownership, not at all. Even today, some of the world's largest countries deny the individual the right to own land privately and to reap the fruits of his own labors. In 1620, our forefathers left their own countries to seek not only the freedom of their beliefs, but also for their rights as individuals, including the right to own land. And it was to secure these rights that they fought for and won their independence. In the Constitution of the United States, these basic rights are clearly established. Thus, the individual has the protection of laws to help safeguard his ownership, his title to his land. But in our frontier days, the protection of the law did not expand as fast as the movement of men to claim the land. When the pioneers pushed westward, explored, and settled the country, they had to fight for land, not only against the perils of the elements and the perils of the wilderness, but also against the perils of outlaws, renegades, and others who would take their hard-won gains by force. And fighting did not always end with possession. Even disputes involving legitimate claims to use of the land sometimes were resolved by force and violence. But law and order finally prevailed, and the legal rights of land ownership were firmly established throughout the nation. Instead of violence in the streets, disputes over land ownership were heard in the courts and settled by legal procedures. And under due process of law, the nation has grown and prospered in a healthy economy based on the rights of the individual. But with the law came the difficulties inherent in the law. In its zeal to protect the rightful owner of property from involuntary loss, the law has built up elaborate conditions prescribing the means of legal transfer of land ownership. Under our American legal system, Land ownership may be transferred by gift or sale, by will or by direct inheritance, by court decree, or many other ways. In most cases, these transfers are made by written instruments, which are usually recorded in the public records for all to see. Theoretically, 
A complete history of rights of ownership to any piece of land could thus be determined by examination of the public records. So, over the years, a chain of title might be established showing the extent of ownership and its transfer or partial transfer. For instance, title holder Smith puts a mortgage on his house. Also, he gives his next door neighbor the right to use a new driveway between the houses. Both the mortgage holder and the neighbor own part of the Smith link in the chain of title. If Smith sells his property, he can sell only the interest he still owns, unless, of course, he can remove the mortgage holder's and the neighbor's rights. Thus, throughout a chain of ownership, any imperfection, any legal right that has not been properly discharged remains an encumbrance on the title to that land and might become a legal claim against the right of full ownership. Regardless of the number of later transfers, in most instances, regardless of time and good intentions, that claim is valid and may be recognized by the law. It constitutes a defect in the title of a new purchaser of that land. These defects can take many forms, but generally they are classified into two categories encumbrances of record, and hidden defects. Encumbrances of record, as the name implies, are facts affecting ownership of real property that can be found in the official recorded documents of a public office, be it city, county, state, or federal. One common example would be a mortgage on a given piece of property. The law provides for the recording of that mortgage in a record maintained by a public official charged with that responsibility. This same record contains copies of literally millions of other documents affecting the title to real estate. Locating, for example, the exact boundaries of the land described in these recorded documents is a job for experts. Then an easement may be created, granting to someone else the right to use a portion of the property in some specific manner. There are many kinds of easements, which may be on the ground, above it, or below it. Sidewalks for the use of the public may constitute an easement. Rights to install poles, wires, or underground cables for public utilities involve easements which, although they add to the comfort and well-being of the owner, still limit his use of the property. In some areas, it is common to sell the right to underground exploration for coal, oil, or other resources. These rights, given or sold by property owners, and many, many more such rights, constitute encumbrances upon the title of record, which could be discovered by a thorough search of the records of public officials. But this is only the beginning may be unpaid taxes or special assessments, and an examination of another set of records possibly located in a different building is necessary to determine the status of those taxes and special assessments. An electrician, a plumber, a carpenter, or some other craftsman may not have been paid for his labor on the property, or a contractor or a building material supplier may not have been paid. The result could be several mechanics liens, filed in another set of public records against the property. In one of the many courts, a judgment might have been rendered against the seller, thereby creating a claim against the title to the land. This information, vital to the preparation of a complete chain of title, could be found only by searching the records of all the courts having jurisdiction over the ownership of a particular parcel of land. And these courts, including local, state, and federal, might be located in several different cities. Locating and recognizing the significance of all of the features of these recorded matters requires skill and training. Because